So I hope you enjoyed uh, Fishing for Poetry and Norman McCaig. We're here in the Scottish Poetry Library with the producer and writer of the film, uh, Douglas Eady. Douglas, we thought we'd get a wee chat after the film. You've very generously gifted the copyright to the Scottish Poetry Library. So these films are available for free. We'll have them on our YouTube. We'll have them for screenings. It's an absolutely fascinating film, that, Fishing for Poetry. Mm -hmm. And it really brings the character of Norman very clearly to life and also indicates the gravitational pull of the man mm -hmm. that you got all the A-listers from the Scottish performing arts, I would say, into the film. Tell us about, uh, take us back to the start of it. Uh, why did you think that the centenary year of his birth was the right time for the film? Well, it's the right opportunity. BBC loves anniversaries, mm -hmm. we thought. Um, so we thought that would be a shame, but proved not to be. It wasn't until we came up with Billy Connolly as a formally appearing in the same stage as McCaig uh, and Andrew Gregg and Ali Bain that the thing just came together, yeah. It does, it does work really beautifully and he is, there's something about the fact he's gigantic and um, extremely funny throughout mm -hmm. that just makes it a very different, it, but it doesn't quite become a Billy Connolly film. Oh no, 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 it doesn't. Uh, I mean, Mc, uh, Connolly knew exactly why he was there. He was there to make the film funding possible. Uh, but he, what he remembered about McCaig was pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was buttressed by the McCaig uh, archive sequences uh, came from uh, Mike Alexander's much earlier film with Magnus Magnuson about McCaig. Because McCaig was a kind of master of the one the one liner, you know. How long would a, how long did it take him to write a poem? Oh, two fags, you know, this kind of thing. <laughs> uh, so that kind of balanced out, you know. Plus Ali had a Ali Bain had a tremendous relationship with McCaig, a genuine relationship with McCaig, mm -hmm. based on McCaig's love of music, I guess, you know, and he he recognised Ali's genius in a way, you know. So uh, it was great fun making the film. Hard work getting it together, but oh, no making, doubt. making it was great fun. And then the blizzard, that, oh, I shouldn't say that. That's a, that's a spoiler, but the blizzard at the end. No, they've was, seen it, they've seen it. This is after the fact. This is after the fact. Well, the blizzard was a real bonus, wasn't it? <laughs> As a piece of film, it's really uh, Billy Connolly trying to tie his wee knot, silence, <laughs> wind howling then. Yeah. Why couldn't have McCaig liked somewhere like Jamaica? It's a, it's a great line. It's a great line. Well, to be anti the tourist board, I'll say that was shot two weeks before the summer solstice. <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. Ah, but you're high up the Cairn. You're not the Cairn Gorms. You're high up in the, the Ascent Hills there. So it's yeah. going to be a hard place. Yeah. Well, getting there was really quite, well, not quite, not tough, you know, just a long walk. But uh, uh, Ali hadn't, doesn't walk a great deal and Billy wasn't getting any younger, you know, so they weren't used to walking. Yeah. So why did you think that a film needed to be made about McCaig? Well, I suppose a bit like you guys here at the Scottish Poetry Library, you feel that poetry has more to offer than is generally recognised or, or, or acted upon, you know, so mm. films about poetry, films about poet, going, going out on, uh, on network television, can't be bad. Uh, I was told by Ewan McKeg, uh, Norman's son, who also appears in the film, of course, that uh, sales of the collected poem went up ten times in the in the few weeks after the. Not after bad. The so you was cashing in there. So that can't be bad. I don't get any royalties off that. <laughs> no, no, of course. <laughs> but it was. It came out in 2010, which I think was the same time as the Many Days, the uh, selected poetry of McKeg was released which is a beautiful yeah. little collection, which we have here at the Scottish right. Poetry Library, free to anyone that wants to come in and enjoy <laughs> it. Um, so you say that poetry in this format, poem, poetry in this kind of documentary, can help bring it to new audiences. What did you hope that audiences would get out of that that they wouldn't get out of just approaching, like, say they came across the, the poems, the collected poems mm -hmm. of Norman McCaig, mm -hmm. a big hardback. What would the film do that uh, just coming into contact with just the book wouldn't? Well, one thing would be um, Ewan McKeg's comment that this father went as quickly as possible to the lochs to get as many, to kill as many trout as possible. <laughs> it's very, that, that, it's not like, like you imagine that, stalking that, that, ruthlessly, that, robotically. That side of him, you know, um, which, um, you know, he sometimes thought of as a somewhat intellectual poet, or kind of almost metaphysical. 
but that sort of brings them down, brings them down to a, a more ordinary level, you know? Yeah, no, you're completely right. And uh, even just a little tidbit that I forgot that Norman McKeg must have at some point been young. I'd never considered oh, yeah. the fact. Yes, and yes. The, the fact that he was out as a keen cyclist, I think it was. Oh, he went all over Scotland, yeah. All yeah, over yeah. Scotland. Yeah. And it's just that thing of he spent his entire life preparing to be the poet mm -hmm. that we know him as, this kind of like legendary mm -hmm. huge figure mm -hmm. of the Scottish mm -hmm. poetry scene. Mm -hmm. um, in I don't, terms I don't of the, think we have him on the film saying that, but he he took a total aversion in, in, like in the late 50s maybe to his earliest stuff. And, and that kind of destroyed as much of it as he could and you know it was just getting too uh, too much up himself you know ah fair enough fair mm -hmm. enough um so but he's also there's a book called the bonus i think it's the bonus book of nationalist ballads or that's got a better title than that but anyways, he's got a, a nationalist rant in that, Norman McKay. Yeah. Right. I don't know whether that book's still available, but... Uh. So one of the, like, obviously Norman McKay is, uh, w was a kind of cultural nationalist. Mm -hmm. 2010 was quite an interesting time in the Scottish political scene. Was there, I, I get the sense of you're a bit of a political man yourself. Were you keen to add something to Scotland's political scene by having this big cultural discussion and foregrounding this great of Scottish poetry? It wasn't as specific as uh, that kind of aspect of it. wasn't as, as specific as, as it was for the William Souter film, which was very. Uh, in fact, in some ways, the Souter film was Souter's life was just seen as a metaphor for for, for Scotland, you know, bedridden. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I guess it all helps, you know. That, that that's the thing, you know. Um, just showcasing the culture. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, it's not getting any easier, you know. I mean, uh, BBC Scotland has, I think, failed in its, its, its public service quite a bit in that respect. I think if you'd like Douglas's full opinions on all this, speak to him directly. The Scottish Poetry Library has, uh, <laughs> has uh, certain funding obligations and therefore will scot around the rest of that discussion. <laughs> um, but uh, to go back to Norman McCaig and this film in particular, Things that I think as an audience I was desperate to know was how was it getting up that hill with all the camera equipment? Um, did they all really spend the night there or did they shuffle off to a hotel? And oh. um, how was it working with all those different poets? Right. Uh, to answer them in reverse order, getting all the different poets, I mean, getting them to say yes just took time. Uh, but actually filming them was it was a dream. Each of them, each of them had a had a favourite poem, and each was happy to do a little introduction and then read a poem. That was that was easy. Uh, getting up the hill, we uh, we hired a couple of sherpas, um, and my son among them, uh, and they helped the other guys get up the hill, set up, and we set up tents. Uh, I was at the time a member of the series Hill Walking Club, so I boarded all the tents from, uh, apart from a sleeping bag, we've got an extra special sleeping bag for, for Ali and for, and for, uh, and for Billy Connolly. Uh, Andrew Gregg had his own. So we did, we did spend one night under canvas up there, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Ali had made a, a big curry, I think was the, the early part of the film, he's making the curry, and we had that, and it was very good, and there was a sing song, which we recorded. Uh, and then went to bed and tried to sleep, but it was far too cold to sleep. And then the blizzard happened. <laughs> Did, you could feel the cold in the area. You could feel the cold. I really enjoyed the fact that they didn't catch any fish. Yes, well, as Ali suspects, so did Norman. <laughs> <laughs> that, it really added to it, didn't it? It really added to it. Is there anything you'd like to leave the audience with? Uh, any little uh, little nuggets from the film that really stood out or any little behind the scenes? <laughs> yeah, well, if you like, coming down the hill, <laughs> the two Sherpas asked if they could have the money to go and get some sausage rolls uh -huh. from the, the Loch Inver pie shop or something, which sure. is the most expensive in, in, in Europe, I think. <laughs> but uh, but they were, they were, we were very glad to give it to them. <laughs> lovely, lovely. 
Um, well, Douglas, thank you very much for gifting the copyright to the Poetry Library. Yeah. These film, the, the yeah. Norman McCaig film, Fishing for Poetry, yeah. and the other piece, uh, yeah. William Souter film, are beautiful, and I'm sure our audience will really appreciate them. I'm sure they'll go on to have second, third, fourth, fifth lives out yeah, there on the that's, internet. That's, that's what it's all about, yeah. Thank you.